I'm Lisbeth Levick, and I am a Character Effects TD at SideFX. In this Houdini 20.5 Muscles Masterclass series, myself and John Mariella will be showing you everything you need to know to simulate muscles in Houdini. John will start out by introducing the broad concepts and doing a basic muscle sim pass, and then I will do an in-depth node-by-node breakdown of the entire muscle workflow. We know that there are many people who have used other DCCs and packages for muscles in the past and are looking for an alternative. For this reason, I will try not to assume too much Houdini knowledge and explain things that may seem basic and obvious to a more seasoned Houdini user. But long-term Houdini users fear not. This is a thorough and comprehensive masterclass, not just for beginners. In the second part of the series, we will cover additional advanced topics such as target shapes and rest muscle de-intersection. Note that these advanced videos will be uploaded as they are created. Skin and tissue will be covered in their own separate masterclass. And now over to John Mariella for his overview of the muscle system. So what is the Houdini muscle tissue system? Well, it's a set of Houdini digital asset nodes that interact with and wrap around vellum functionality. Your surface models are brought into the system, turned into solids or tetrahedrons. We then use an assortment of special purpose HDAs, which for the most part merely add or modify geometry attributes. Once the solid geometry is prepared, we feed it into one of the solver nodes. The solver nodes are wrappers around pre-wired vellum constraints and a contained vellum solver. The attributes passed in with the solid geometry are used to modify or enable the constraint properties before they're fed into the vellum solver, which runs your simulation. The overall intent of the system is to simplify much of the complexity involved in creating musculature and fleshy animations. And by abstracting some of the general terminology and concepts inherent in vellum workflows into special purpose HDAs, hopefully make the system a little more intuitive. When we work with the muscle and tissue system, we're going to create three separate simulation passes, one for each of the muscle, the tissue, and the skin layers. After each simulation pass, your output should be saved to disk because it's going to be used as the input for the next simulation pass. Your final renderable geometry will use the last simulation layer as an input to a deformer. The prerequisite items you're going to need to get started are your creature surface model, an anatomical muscle surface model, and anatomical bone surfaces with animation. The surface model should be constructed in a T-pose and a feasible position near the origin with one of the principal axes being the plane of symmetry. The outer surface should completely enclose the muscle and bone geometry. The animation on the bones can be baked into the geometry, but a deforming mesh with a skeleton or kin effects or channel animation is perfectly okay too. So let's take a look at how a simple vellum network might differ from our muscle system. In a typical vellum setup, we would take our geometry, wire it into the vellum constraint nodes, like tetrahedral stretch constraints or attach constraints, and we would apply the attachment to specific points on the muscle. And with a quick setup like this, we can launch a simulation with a vellum solver. If we would then go back upstream and make any sort of change to the topology, like here I make copies of the muscles, then this might affect the point selection we made earlier. Our constraint has to be reconfigured with a new group of points. If new target geometry is introduced, then again, there may be some reconfiguring involved to get the right result. If we want to get individual muscles to have specific properties, like weaker attachments or a more rigid appearance, then we have to make changes to our vellum setup, maybe add additional constraints, reconfigure them, and have them ready to simulate. What we end up with is a vellum network that is custom made for the incoming topology and point count. Let's compare that to a simplified muscle system setup. Here we have a muscle solidify node, a physical properties node, and a constraint properties node. These HDAs will create attributes on the muscle geometry that tell the muscle solver how the constraint should behave. Muscle ends, for example, have a procedurally generated weight mask that generates attachments to nearby bones. Changing the number of muscles or their point count or the number of bones doesn't require any special treatment in the constraint configuration. By giving each muscle a unique muscle identification attribute, we can select muscles in the viewport as distinct items. 
changing physical material properties and constraint properties is simply done by adding a new parameter set on the property node and making tweaks that apply specifically to whatever is selected. The convenience of this system makes it easy to set up and tweak simulations. The HDA tools leverage the idea that point attributes can be added and varied to tailor the resulting simulation at an abstracted level, one or two steps removed from the actual VELM nodes that do the work. The Muscle Solver node, for instance, has pre-configured constraints to affect muscle ends, which pin the muscle insertions to nearby bones, muscle-to-muscle -muscle attachments, which connect neighboring muscles together with springs, and muscle-to-bone attachments, which connect muscles to nearby bones with sliding variable springs. And most of the constraint properties will respond not only to stiffness and damping attributes, they can also be controlled by weight masks to direct where the constraints should and shouldn't be applied. Let's move forward now to an example where we'll set up a complete muscle and tissue simulation on an animated character.